Tonight on Crime Story, a hood on the rise and the cop who will stop at nothing to put him away. This is their story. Tonight's episode will recap the history of their battle for the streets of Chicago. Chicago, 1963, a city where violent crimes were often the work of crews of professional criminals run by angry and ambitious men anxious to make their way into the hierarchy of organized crime. A ruthless, independent operator named Ray Luca is making his first big moves. One man, Michael Torello, leading an overworked and understaffed elite unit of detectives, is charged with overcoming the work of organized crime in the streets of Chicago and stopping men like Ray Luca. Lieutenant Mike Torello, MCU. I got serious problems here, Lieutenant. Who am I talking to? I need what I need now. I want a car, and I want a million dollars in cash, in front, right now. That's going to take some time. Say goodbye to her. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. <laughs> hurt anybody else when this is over i'm gonna find what you love the most and i'm gonna kill it your mother your father your dog don't matter what it is it's dead <laughs> as long as I could. It wasn't my fault. It was that crazy Indian. 
Beg me to hire the Indian. Ray, well, he had a major reputation in Phoenix. This is Chicago, and two guys I can trust are dead. As far as I'm concerned, it's your fault. Ray, how many things we've done together? Oh, haven't I always carried my weight? Ah! You should have taken them cops out! You gotta do whatever you gotta do! You understand that? Hey, hey! Michael! How you doing? Okay, Tom, how are you? <laughs> Michael! Hey, how, how you doing? Mm. Whoa, 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 hey! Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What's this? Yeah. What's this? You're in school? Yeah, yeah. I'm over at Wright taking a course. How to be a millionaire. Lieutenant Torello, the head of Chicago's major crime unit, became personally involved in his pursuit of Ray Luca when Johnny O'Donnell, the son of family friends, became enmeshed in Ray Luca's ever widening criminal enterprises. <laughs> well, I guess it works. All right. Let's go get it. Nice piece of work. I'll let you know when the money's ready. What's going on here, Ray? Isn't that a, a little irregular, Mr. Bartoli? What do you think? I reach in my pocket, I pull out 300 grand? 300 grand? This piece right here is worth 300. What, what's, the, what's the rest of this stuff, pizza? Every cop in town is looking for this stuff. It's got to be moved in just the right way. There's risk. And there's expense. And you got a smart mouth, kid. And my smart mouth is telling me you're trying to stick it to me. Johnny. Yeah. Hold it. Hey, Johnny, I said hold it. Cool it. Will you relax? Huh. I am not going to be pushed around by that spaghetti in there. I don't care if he is Joe the boss. Johnny O'Donnell showed his disrespect for Phil Bartoli's authority by robbing a Bartoli owned jewelry store. Phil Bartoli isn't going to like this. Never heard of the man. He's my partner in this joint. I think you're ready to move up in the world, ain't kid? Time's right for me. Yeah? Three punks hit a joint of mine on the Gold Coast. Like they think I'm not gonna find out who did it, right? Like they're gonna steal from me. You think you can handle that? They're gone. It's done. One of them was your friend O'Donnell. Hey, thanks a lot. Have a nice Easter. That's prime sirloin. Let it thaw, right? Stones are inside, and I hope Bartoli chokes on him. Second rate, anyway. We got a deal? Yeah, we got a deal. Johnny, I'm glad to see you handle it this way. I mean, now you're using your head. Hey, well, I'm glad you're glad. <laughs> Man, this car ride's beautiful. Hey, can I try it? You want to take a spin? If you don't mind. No, I don't mind. <laughs> Listen, pull over here. Sure. Hey, no hot rod. Don't worry, I'll go easy. Who did this, Jenny? Tell me, who did this to you, Jenny? <laughs> Luca, Mike. Luca. Mike. Personal things. Mm. Part of the museum score. Glove compartment of his car. Jen? Nurse! Johnny? Johnny?
We can take him in. Conspiracy. Worthless. Mike. It's murder. You're posing for pictures, or you're gonna pull the trigger. <laughs> See how easy it is? How really easy it is? When I take you down, I'm gonna take you down right. I'm gonna take you down all the way. Lieutenant Michael Torello stopped short of committing homicide. He let Ray Luca live. And in the months that followed, the ambitious young racketeer began an upward climb of violence, robbery, and murder that would catapult him into the upper echelons of organized crime. We're in the bookie, big, we rake off the top business. And what makes it big is that we're nationwide. What I'm proposing is a nationwide bookmaking network. This is how it works. Our man in Manhattan wires to us in Nevada all the New York action he's taken on the clay fight. Let's say uh, 4.2 million on clay at five to three. Now, because we're in touch with the rest of the country, that quick, we can lay off 4.2 million on clay at three to five. We don't try to win, and we don't try to lose. We're at no risk. All we do is take our cut, 2% off the top of all the money bet on illegal gambling nationwide, week in and week out. This might not even be illegal. <laughs> it almost isn't. You see, all we are is a clearinghouse for people who bet illegally in a state where betting is legal. What's the hitch? We need uh, an existing operation. One the bookies uh, already have faith in for an accurate line. Gans and Hartman run the best sports book in Nevada. The uh, Riverdown sports book. Gans is a bum. Can't deal with him. I started this business on a street corner in Las Vegas in 45. I took action from truckers, from cowboys, from GIs fresh out of the war, anybody. And it took me 20 years to build this into the best sports book in Vegas, bet by bet. This is my breath. This is my life's blood. I don't sell that. We're not asking you to sell. We're saying you can expand with us. I'm not interested in your expansion. It's a new age, Mr. Gantz. For a business to survive, it needs to be flexible. Oh, do me a favor, will you? Don't lay that line on me. No, that's uh, more than fair. I think Noah and I should talk about your offer alone. There's nothing to discuss. You know, you're not the first guys to take a run at us. Am I right, Max? I mean, they send you guys on a regular basis. And you know what we do? We chew you up and we spit you out. What I want to know is, when is this garbage going to end? When? It just did. Dropping by to say hi, and for you to ear check some of the swinging sounds from Act the Fly. Gans tried to have him killed, Luca accelerated his plan to take over the River Downs sportsbook. Gans in them. 
They're moving, Frank. You know, I always eat too much whenever I win. <laughs> Where do you get some antacid around here? Room service when we get at the Lucas Suite. <laughs> business. <laughs> I think we're gonna work well together. Okay, Johnny. Sure. Yeah. Here we go. Wait for me, fellas. Paulie, get some champagne. Join the celebration. Salud. Salud. As Lucas' star was rising, Lieutenant Michael Torello and his major crime unit were plotting his downfall, attacking Luca first by going after his chief henchman, Polly Taglia, and Frank Holman, and then by turning up the heat on Luca's boss, Phil Bartoli. Hit the button! Hit the button! Go! What the hell is this rest? Who the hell are you? From a bad dream. I ain't putting a gun to my head and pulling the trigger. You want to do it? Go ahead. But no way, no way am I going to help you get Ray Luca. Holman, I'll see what I can do. Scores? Yeah. But Luca ain't making scores. Luca's out of your reach, so forget it. Luca and Bartoli, using their underworld earnings, bought into a legitimate business interest to launder their illegal cash. Here comes Kehoe and Marilyn Stewart. He's the guy Manny plugged into the pension fund. He got us the bread to get us in here. And she's the front for the operation. Now make nice, huh? It's Ted Kehoe, Phil Bartoli. Bartoli, pleasure. I'd like to meet my associate, Marilyn Stewart. Hi. Marilyn's been keeping a close eye on things for you, gentlemen. Yeah, you're operating in a profit going into your second quarter. It's very unusual, considering the outlay. That's the way I'm used to operating. And I don't even like this place. I don't understand. You don't have to understand. I'm the boss. What's in the bank? Uh, $200,000. You go to the bank and you get that, you bring that to me. Why? A consulting fee. <laughs> That'll bankrupt the whole... That's the point, my dear. That's the point. Michael Torello knew his close friend Ted Kehoe was involved in Ray Luca's illegal schemes. Remember we used to play American Legion ball here? You wanted to see our numbers up there on the scoreboard? What's this about, Michael, huh? What's the matter with you? It's about the pension fund, the factory, your deal with Manny Weisworth. Hey, Luca. Hey, what the hell? What are you, gonna push me around too? Now, what the hell's the matter with you? I wanna know what's going on. What, have you lost your mind? It's business, my business. You know what you're getting into with Luca? What are you, an outfit guy all of a sudden? Business, what business can you have with Luca and Weisbord? Weisbord is business. That's all it is, Michael. I don't know what you're so upset about. Well, I'll make it very clear for you. 
He's an outfit boss. Do you understand He's that? He's a legitimate businessman when I deal with him, all right? The pension fund, the factory, it's all legitimate and a prudent investment. So is the loan for the casino. What casino? Michael, I accept. I don't know much about police work, all right? Now, you should accept. You don't know much about business. You want to know what I do know, Teddy? That you don't make one deal with Wiseboard or Luca. That once you're in, you're in for the duration, which means the contract expires when you do. Yeah, thanks. Jumpy, aren't we? Wait, we got to talk. Yeah, I know. We're going to expand into another casino. So we'll be submitting for another loan. Another loan? Mm -hmm. You promised me that it would cover the 200 grand you already paid to Bartoli. And you haven't, and that loan isn't fault. If it's not cleared by the beginning of the next quarter, you could be in big trouble. Yeah, I'll take care of it. Good. You know, Marilyn is beside herself. She's worried she might be criminally liable. I said I'll take care of it. That's all you need from me. Now I want to move on the new loan. Yeah, whatever you say, Ray. I'll, uh, I'll work it through the Board of Trustees. You know, uh, Marilyn does not... Look! Have... Marilyn is your problem. You make her understand, or I'll explain the facts of life to her myself. But Marilyn Stewart, concerned for her safety and that of her lover, Ted Kehoe, refused to keep quiet. Excuse me, Marilyn Stewart? Yes, can I help you? My name is Lieutenant Michael Torello. I'm a friend of Ted Kehoe's. Oh, yes, he speaks of you often. We have to talk. Okay. Uh, David, Julie, stay in the yard. I came here because Ted is in trouble, and so are you. I don't want to see either one of you going to prison. What are you saying? Have you talked to the FBI or to the federal attorney's office? Well, why should I do that? Because you don't like laundering mob money and because Ted set you up for all of this? Ted wouldn't do that, and I don't know anything about mob money or federal investigations or anything. What you and Ted do with your personal lives is not my concern. But I do care about what happens to him. I appreciate your candor. You don't trust me, do you? It's not that. Then what is it? Look, Miss Stewart, Marilyn, I don't know you. I don't know where you came from. But I do know that you and Ted are involved up to your necks with dangerous people who will milk you for everything that it's worth. Very dangerous people. Lieutenant. Ted and I are in a business. We're insurance people with other interests. All I right. think you're exaggerating. Here's my card. When the heat gets too unbearable, call me. Mr. Harry Brightell, please. This is Mr. Brightell. Hi, this is Marilyn Stewart. A police officer just came to my home, a Lieutenant Torello. He tried to scare me. You said this sort of thing was not going to happen. Lieutenant Torello, those are court orders. You are to turn over to my office all files on or pertaining to Ray Luca, Phil Bartoli, Marilyn Stewart, and Ted Kehoe. I'm waiting. Get out of here. Not without those papers. I have files on those people as they relate to their activities in the streets of Chicago, which is none of your business. Now get out of here before I lose my temper and throw you out.
Give us some room, Paulie. Close to ruining my career. You know, things ain't bad enough for this investigation. You've got to yank me out of an important board meeting like you're a prince at Division Street. What's the matter with you? You want to identify her for us? It's so important that you had to come here. What did you do to Marilyn Stewart? FBI or the MCU and expose you for what you really are. Don't tell me about you going to the FBI or anybody else. You understand me? What are you going to do about it? by Ted Kehoe's murder, Torello's determination to take down Ray Luca became an obsession. And Torello began to close the gap when he arrested Howie Dressler, hired to rob a jewelry salesman for Luca. So, uh... You expect us to buy your Mr. Innocent routine? And then you clam up like a seasoned con. That's my problem. I'm not innocent. I need help. I don't know where to go for it, but it can't be your hey, way. Hey, if you're more afraid of them than you are of us, you're making a mistake, you understand? Do you? Mike, all right. I'm going to talk to you. Keep talking to this guy. So tell me about your wife. She's real sick. We have to pay for help with the kids. Who got you started? Forget it. What's the matter with your wife? got polio. Anybody know these guys? New players. I can't make any of them. We did identify one of them. Yeah?
sorry, Danny. Oh, my God. Give me my keys. Pardo's a pretty smart guy. I was wrong. I was so damn wrong. Stupid. About what? Social club. Shit, I never stopped you from killing Luca. You should have killed him. You're right, Danny. I should have killed him. And I will kill him one of these days. Dressler's wife. She. Well, you go just fine. Come on, let me take you home. He's a good friend, Mike. We made those guys from last night. Oh, it was quick. Yeah, nothing to it. They all had jackets, minor stuff. Backgrounds? Yeah, they all lived in Dressler's neighborhood. Thanks, Joey. My guess? Dressler suddenly had a lot of cash from the jewelry heist. So they figured he was a big shot. I wonder how they feel about that today. That was an ice cold hit. Yeah, the lab report, two of them received a coup de gras. Two 22s apiece in their head. Like Marilyn Stewart and Johnny O'Donnell. Sounds like our pal Ray Luca. It wasn't a hit, it was a demonstration. But what's Luca whacking other crews for? What do you want? You're busy tonight. So what's it to you? Do I know you? Yeah, now you do. I'm your new boss, and you got a new business. You take your friends and get out of here. Luca. L-U-C-A. Now, you make some calls and find out who I am. And any scores that come through here, you clear with me. You give them 28 cents and a dollar, and we take 10% from your action. That's the deal, and that's your new business, Gravetti. And this fix is citywide. Now, if any new crews come in off the street, you call me. And so I know that you understand. Look. You got a lock on what goes down here. You got a problem making money? I got a problem. When things happen, I don't know about it. Phil, are you one of the six bosses who runs this town or what? A Vegas operation's a goal. We take a cut on any action that goes down here, and you're making a mint. You know what I think? What do you think? I think that you're feeling guilty about all this money you're making. 
and you got no exposure. Now, well, that's a pretty good position to be in, isn't it? Watch you, go ahead. I think we're standing still here. Now, we have the opportunity to expand in Vegas if we have the cash. We need to fill that union board seat. I've called for a convening of the committee. Our last appointment was immature. We need to move carefully now. And we must include all our colleagues. Why? We can't get those guys to agree on anything. Nevertheless, we owe it to them. But why do we got to go to them about the union appointment? They're going to be sticking their noses in places where they don't belong. Now, that is inviting trouble. Those who invite trouble have little future with us. You in favor of expansion in Vegas? I think we've reached the point where we have to have long-range plans instead of grabbing at what's next. Good. You'll come to the meeting, Ray. It's time the committee met you. This is your moment, kid. Have we contacted everyone? All the arrangements are in place. Personal favor, huh, Phil? Yeah. Stop calling me, kid. Get in the car. Get in the car. Get in the car. We're there, Paulie. It happened. Well, where? We're in Park Ridge. What could happen in Park Ridge? I'm going to meet the Central Committee. Word of advice, Ray. Don't trust them Russians. Keep your hands on the wheel, you maniac. Russians. <laughs> Does this mean, like, you're one of them boss of bosses now? We got a lock on it, and I feel good. <laughs> that takes care of them. Now, what do you want? I want it to always be like this. Family. What are you talking about? Don't I provide for you? Yes, but I worry about you and the kids and all these cops and... All right, look. We'll make the arrangements. Mm. We'll sell the house, the furniture. We'll move to Vegas. The Vegas routine again. Look, it's done. We're going to Vegas, where the sun shines all the time and the snow doesn't show its face. Huh. All right? Does that make you happy? Oh, then I can stay at home alone and sit by a pool. You don't stop, do you? Look, as soon as all the hustle is over, I promise you, we'll do more stuff like this all the time. OK? That would make me happy. Yeah? You know what would make me happy? <laughs> what? Promise me you won't sell your bathings. <laughs> this time it's for sure? This time it's for sure. Lieutenant Trello here? Well, 
Is he here? I'm Torello. What is it? Another subpoena to testify before Brightel's grand jury? This guy's acting like he's really got a case. He can lose a key witness, a key suspect, but be damned if he'll lose face. Right. And he's got the nerve to have me followed around the clock. And now this. Where? Come here. See the guy in the corner in the government-issued inconspicuous suit with the wingtip shoes the whole bit? How long's he been there? All day. He's not a problem, though. I go around the corner and I lose him. It's the principle of the thing. What's doing with Holman? Crychek's working it. Nate? Where'd he go? Look. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Luca, Mr. Luca, this is for you. What is that, boss? Just get going. You know, I think we gotta get another place, Paulie. In Vegas? No, we're not going to Vegas yet. This indictment thing? Yeah, the indictment. And Bartoli. Not now. But this is important. I put the house on the market today. Take it off. And I think I, I got the furniture sold. Forget it. What? We're not moving now. What? What, is there an echo in here? I said we're not moving now. Why? Why? Because I say so. That's why. Yeah. Well, I don't care what you say. We're moving. The plans are made. I already signed the contract with the realtor. I'll take care of the realtor. Oh. What are you going to do? Shoot him. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ray. I'm sorry. Here. You go to jail. Do whatever makes you happy. I'm out. I'm taking the kids and I'm leaving. Oh. Kill me. Go ahead. Kill me. Kill me. I don't care anymore. Don't give me any ideas. Go kill the children. Come on. You're a big tough man. I wouldn't give you the satisfaction, all right? I got an indictment. Big deal. I got one, too. They got no case.
The business we are to discuss will be seeded by loans from the Midwest Employees Pension Fund. But since there is a vacancy on that board, we can discuss nothing until that vacancy is filled. So therefore, I have chosen Stephen Cordo. You are surrounded by good men. As you see, I am standing alone. You know, um, we ought to talk more. We, uh, we forget to discuss things. People get angry. Um, no talk leads to no good. You telling me that people who don't talk must be blown to pieces in elevators? They were my friends. Mr. Luca, Noah Gantz and Hugh McManus used to stand here by me. You want me to forget that? This year we're going to gross $20 million from our sportsbook operation. We act business like. We got 10 times that number waiting for us in Vegas. And if we build new ones, we can double that number again. We got to keep pace with the future to profit by it. And the future means more for all of us. When we forget that, we get greedy with what we made in the past. My friends got greedy. They were blind to the future. They stood in the way of us profiting by it. I mean, it's no surprise to anybody in here that blind guys uh, can step into faulty elevators. 